Newcomers to Linux are very often confused by the fact that there are strange pronunciations to words that seem to obviously spell something else. In this video, I am going to refer to the Mate desktop over and over again, and it looks like it is spelled M-A-T-E, mate. Why am I pronouncing it that way? Because it is actually named after a South American plant that is turned into a drinkable brew called Yerba Mate or Mata or something like that, which I can't pronounce with the correct colloquialisms. The developers of Ubuntu Mate call it Mate, so therefore I call it Mate. This is also part of the Ubuntu suite of releases all the different flavors, in, including the main Ubuntu version, which runs GNOME, G-N-O-M-E, in the U.S., Canada, and the U.K., and many other English-speaking parts of the world. This is pronounced GNOME. As of late, the developers of that desktop would like you to pronounce it GNOME. And the 1910 release is affectionately referred to as an Eowyn Ermin. It gets weirder and weirder as we go along. Just offering up this information right at the beginning of the video so we can manage some of those comments. Yes, it's weird, I know. No, I don't care what you call it. You could call your desktop George P. Schmidlap as long as you use it and you're enjoying it. Greetings and salutations and welcome to this video in which we're going to take a look at Ubuntu Mate 19.10. This is the beta release which just came out a couple of days ago. I was very surprised to get an email directly from Martin Wimpress, the head developer of Ubuntu Mate, giving me a heads up about this. This is one that I have been waiting for because I know there's a lot of big changes and a lot of big bug fixes. He's so happy with the state of it that with the beta, he went ahead and released the release notes, which is kind of unusual. He doesn't expect any major changes between now and the final release date of October the 17th. I'm not going to go through these notes. There's way too much to talk about, but a lot has changed in Ubuntu. This video is an introductory look. I'm probably going to skip over something. I may even get some things wrong. This is a beta release, and one thing that is pointed out is that those who download and install the beta release on their own system do so at their own risk simply because of the fact that uh, it is a beta. Things are going to change. It might destabilize. They might break something. Well, I actually decided this time around that I was going to be uh, a little bit uh, living on the edge, and I actually installed the beta. I am doing this video from this beta release. I've been warming up to... Ubuntu Mate more and more over the past few months. I've helped to set a lot of people up with it. My brother is running it. My mom is now running it on her machine. And a lot of people that I'm working with are using it. And I'm using Ubuntu 1804 on uh, one of my machines right now the, with the Mate desktop. And it has just proven itself to be very stable. And this version is proving itself to be stable as well, although I've only run it for about two or three days. It has uh, been very nice to play around with. So, uh, this is my desktop as I have it set up. And this is what I usually do with Mate. I use what is known as the Redmond layout. We'll get more into that in just a minute. I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like. And this is what the menu looks like. This is the old Mint menu from back in the Gnome 2 days, but that continues on under Mate. Mate is a desktop that happened because Gnome went from Gnome 2 to Gnome 3. This is Gnome 2 carried forward. And those of you who have started out in Linux many, many years ago will remember what Gnome 2 looked like and acted like. Uh, it's very similar, very close indeed. So, what I did was, originally, was install this in a virtual machine, which I have running right here. And this is what it looks like when you first install it. So let's go ahead and full screen that, which I can now do, uh, because uh, in, in past versions of VirtualBox, like when I was using Ubuntu 18.04, the long-term support version, and I would install VirtualBox either from the repositories, which was like 
five two or five three or something like that that you got. Uh, if I went into the six series, I had numerous bugs. One of which was that it refused to work when it was in full screen. You just couldn't type. But this works perfectly fine. So this is what it looks like when you first get it. And this is a layout they are calling familiar. And it kind of looks like the old GNOME 2 desktop a little bit. And you see here that we have what is called the Brisk menu, which is from Solus, uh, a distribution of Linux that was started up by uh, uh, Ike Dougherty a few years ago. And he wrote this menu from scratch, and uh, Martin Wimpress incorporated it into Ubuntu Mate. And by the way, this that's getting an update now. And uh, this is what the desktop looks like. But one of the beautiful things about working with Ubuntu Mate is if you don't like what you see, you can change it. There are a lot of desktop layouts. <laughs> I mean a bunch. So if you go into this control center application right here, and we'll have to look for it. Uh, we're looking for the tweak tool. Actually, what I need to do before I do anything like that, let's make these fonts in here a little bigger, just so it makes it easier for everybody to see. And there's the tweak tool right, up, right below appearance. So let's go ahead and just, I'm going to crank these up. It's one of the nice things I like about this desktop, and this has been like this for many, many years, is that you have very, very tight control over, let's see, get turn that off and make this bigger. Uh, you have very tight, tight, tight control over the way it looks, and if you don't like something, you can change it. Not a problem. I'm going to make this really big. Let's get it, yeah, that way it's a lot easier for people to see on lower resolution devices. So now let's take a quick look at how the desktop works right here. And we have this lovely tool in here called Mate Tweak. And we can decide what icons we want on the desktop. So we can add a trash can if you'd like or take it away. We have a completely active desktop. Uh, the GNOME developers killed that in GNOME 3. And now you have to install an extension to get something that kind of acts like an active desktop, but it isn't. Uh, this is one of the reasons that I have been warming up to using this desktop, is the fact that later versions of the GNOME desktop, and I have been using GNOME on my main machines since Ubuntu 18.04 was in beta, and they shifted over to the GNOME desktop a while back. I have been using that and liking it very much, but later versions, they're getting a little bit more awkward because GNOME keeps removing features. So if we want to change our desktop look here, we can go in and then let's look at the, turning that into the Redmond. And it warns you that, yeah, you're going to lose your stuff. Do you really want to do this? And then I, I clicked OK. And it will rebuild the desktop and it'll come up with a brand new layout. Isn't that cool? Now, it takes a little while to get itself together. Let's look at some more here. We have what is known, he calls this traditional. I think this is the one that looks and acts a great deal like the old Mate desktop uh, or the uh, GNOME 2 desktop from years ago before it became Mate. And yes, it is. This is the menus that we used to have. So those of you who remember playing around with Ubuntu when it first came along, that's kind of what it looked like. And then those of you who fondly remember the Unity desktop, which Ubuntu ran for several years, they have Mutiny. And the Mutiny desktop is very much like what Unity was. It looks and acts a great deal like it. So give this a second to populate. There you go. That is the Mutiny desktop. And you can open up your menu there and you get something that looks like the old Dash. Is that cool or what, man? That's pretty amazing that they have that going on. Well, what happened to my, uh, what happened to my programs, man? Did I close them? I don't know. So let's, uh, well, back in the old days, you used to be able to just click this and start typing. So let's go ahead and do that. Yes, let's go open that back up then. Here we go. Back to where we were at a panel. And this is all just moving along, snappy as can be. This is running in a virtual machine. It's just unbelievable. Let's go back to Redmond. And you guys can explore the desktops. They have a bunch of different things to choose from. And once you set yours up the way you like it, you, you move all your icons around and all that stuff. Let's see, here we go. 
I guess it has to close the applications to move back. I don't know what's going on there, but anyway, it don't matter. Oh, I see. We have both of them open. So it minimized everything when it moved over there. All right. I see how that's doing that. I don't usually fool around with this. What I usually do is just jump in here and do what I got to do and get out. But anyway, once you find one that you like and you can add things to the thing here and you can move these around with a little bit of effort and uh, you can add something to the panel. Usually what I add is a workspace switcher. Let's go ahead and grab one of those so you can see how that works. And there's the workspace switcher right there and I click add. That's going to pretty much show up where I want it. Uh, if you want to move something, right click on it and go to move and then move that into place and then right click again, lock it to the panel. There it is. And I'm, you can run into a situation where you're trying to move something and it gets stuck. That's because what's next to it is locked. So if you're going to like rearrange these little icons down here in the lower right hand corner, if you want to, you got to unlock everything, including what shows the programs right here, because it'll get stuck on one side of that and then it won't work. It, it's hard to explain. Uh, I'm not going to show it right now because it would take a bunch of time, but you'll, you'll figure it out. Well, anyway, once you get this the way you want it to, you can save your layout and then if you change it ever you can always go back to it so I just changed I just saved one there and called it Joe and that is saved down in the uh, configuration file somewhere it goes along with your home directory so if you reinstall for some reason as long as you keep an intact copy of your home directory you can put it back to the way it was so that is very cool um, as I said VirtualBox works great in this this has been a problem child for me for a long time is that we've had all kinds of issues I'm not seeing any of them here uh, I got a message when I first started up a virtual machine after switching over to this version that said that I needed to change the display uh, manager within VM, the VM itself and just make a different choice and once I did that it worked perfectly fine and installed the latest guest edition so very happy about that because this has been a problem for a long time and I like to keep VirtualBox around simply because I'm always testing and trying new things out if VirtualBox itself is having problems then uh, then we have issues and yes I have tried all of the other options out there I like VirtualBox it's the one that I like to use so uh, there you go that's a, a real quick look around we can switch over back over to the desktop we were on here and as far as installation is concerned it's very much like every other ubuntu release except now that when you choose to install third-party stuff it installs your video drivers as well so if you were one of those people that has to install like nvidia drivers like i do well then guess what uh that's how it works now i'm running a virtual machine and i am capturing video so that's why you are seeing the high cpu happening with the htop program even though i'm running that virtual machine i'm still only using about three and a half gigabytes of memory when this first boots up we're talking maybe uh just about I don't know, uh, under 500 megabytes. It's, it's between 300 and 500, depending. And it seems to be pretty stable there. Three or 400, that's it. It's all it's using just for the desktop itself. So very small memory footprint for a GTK3 desktop. Uh, one of the things that has changed in this version is that we no longer have for a... Uh, we, we no longer have the uh, Compiz compositor automatically installed we're using just Marco so let's go ahead and I'll show you where you change that this is something this is a choice that you would have down here used to be we had more choices now it's it's sticking to Marco that's fine with me comp is while it gives you the ability to do some interesting things and have wobbly windows and stuff like that it's a bit unstable and it always has been Marco is much more stable and uses much less memory so that is why they have gone to it now what they said was is that this version of Marco eliminated screen tearing which has been an issue for a very long time one of the reasons that Compiz was included with Ubuntu Mate is because with these sorts of desktops without native compositors like you've got the big desktops like GNOME and Cinnamon that have those built in you can run into screen tearing issues with your video card that's when half the screen 
seems to lag. It's very annoying in certain videos. You can go on YouTube and type in screen tearing. They have screen tearing test videos with bars that move left to right, and you can see that happening. So unfortunately for me, I still had the screen tearing issue. And so what I had to do uh, was add this command to my startup. And I did that in startup applications. I'll show you that in just a second. There is also an issue that has popped up since Ubuntu 1904 where I get pops and clicks in my audio all the time. And I was trying to figure out why this was. And I found the answer. And that is that they have this now set up for power saving to cycle the audio card on and off on some systems. And that seems to work in mine. The only problem is, is that every time it turns on and off, it pops and clicks. So what would happen is, is you'd click on a video, and before you heard the video, you'd hear pop, and the video would play, and then the video would be done, and about five seconds would go by, and then you'd hear click. And that was the turning that card on and off. So I found this command right here to get rid of it. Now, unfortunately, I cannot post this in the YouTube comments because this contains brackets. Or, or the description rather, not the comments. I can't post it in the comments either. You, YouTube does not let you post brackets. So if this is something that you need, I would suggest that you go to Google and you would uh, go and look for NVIDIA card compositor setting. And if you do that, you're going to get led to this. And then you can just put that in your startup applications on your machines. And as far as the uh, sound thing is concerned, uh, I'm not sure how many people are going to get affected with that. The machine that I'm running is relatively old, and I guess if you were doing just like a laptop, it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but it turns out that uh, it is <laughs> on a machine that you have nice speakers hooked to, and I've got some pretty nice big speakers hooked up to this machine, so you can imagine when something starts, it goes pop. It sounds like a gun shooting off. It's like very unpleasant. So that had to get fixed, so I did. There's some other issues here uh, with this menu uh, that I'm hoping will get fixed. And um, I, if, I, if nobody reports this anytime soon, I will go off and report it to make sure. You can't uh, actually change the uh, order of any of these things. Usually with this advanced menu in here, you can change things and move them around but that it doesn't work it doesn't actually let you do that so uh, that is going to have to be addressed at some point that is an old bug that has re-emerged and it could be just because it's in super beta so we'll see what happens with that and this is a brand new beta I'm sure that that will be addressed and even if it isn't there's a workaround and that you can do what I did which is just to clear everything out of this favorites menu and then add them in the order that you would like them to appear. So if you want the first thing to be your web browser, as, as I do right here, then you'd put that there and then your mail. This leads me to the next point. They have dumped Thunderbird for the default mail in Ubuntu 1910. So now they are shipping with Evolution. I personally am not happy about that because I can't stand Evolution. This is a piece of software that I don't want to use. I am very much invested in Thunderbird. A lot of people these days don't even use webmail anymore. They use, or rather, use a mail client. They use webmail. I understand that. But I have several accounts to keep track of, and I think a lot of people do for work and home and whatnot. It's nice to have a mail client that does that without having to open up a browser. You're not doing it on some web page somewhere. And I have been using Mozilla Thunderbird to do that for well over, yeah, about 10 years now. That's how long I've been using that. I had to stop and think about that. So I'm not going to change that anytime soon. And I just simply, I can't, I can't get along with um, evolution. It might work fine for you. Uh, fortunately, it's very easy to change that. All you got to do is uh, just, um, I mean, all you do is just, Remove evolution. Sudo apt remove evolution before you open it. That way you don't get any configuration files on the system. And then just sudo apt install Thunderbird and bang, there it is. So a couple more things to show you here in the tweak. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I, well, I didn't mean to open that. 
Oh, wow, it, it did a search. That's another thing that this will do, which is actually kind of cool, but that's why it did it, because I misspelled that, I guess. Yes. Um, so in here, uh, we have, uh, when we go to the panel, we have all kinds of little things that you can add. These little features are wonderful. Um, you have uh, keyboard LED indicators that you can turn on. You can have what's known as the HUD, which would go along with the Mutiny desktop. That's an old feature from Unity. And then we have, uh, you can turn a dock on. So you could put a dock down here if you wanted to. And you can uh, put a pull down terminal in, which is actually tilde, which is a great little program. And that activates that. And then you hit F12 and your terminal just shows up. So uh, what else was I going to show you guys? There was a couple of other things that I wanted to mention here. Um, let's kind of get down into the nuts and bolts of the system because that has actually been updated and changed. We can go ahead and close that now. We can go ahead and close this too. Uh, let's go ahead and put this right here. I want to close it, thank you, and we'll get out of here. So let's go ahead and full screen our terminal. And then we can use control. I use control and I use the shift key and then the plus to make this bigger so everybody can see it. Kind of got tired of that blue background, so I'm going to be doing this for a while. Might turn the transparency off if I do any more videos uh, with this particular setup. I have been working on a series of videos and uh, we may or may not continue that where we're doing stuff in a terminal so if we do continue it might look different it might look something like this because <laughs> i'm kind of liking this right now working with the mate terminal it, it's working out really well so let us talk about some of the changes in the system and that is uh that when we do a listing of the stuff that's in the root directory this all looks pretty much normal. You can see that I have installed TimeShift on this system, so I have that running. And we have all of the regular directories that you're used to seeing in Ubuntu. However, what they have done now, and I'm not really sure how I feel about this, if we do a long listing here, you're going to see something different. And that is that, well, I have to do a long listing of the root. Thank you. That's my home directory. Uh, you'll see here that a lot of these now aren't really directories anymore. What they are is like the bin directory right here is not really bin. It is a link. So when you are running a script that starts out with a shebang, you know, we're pretty used to seeing uh, that uh, where it starts out with the hashtag, pound sign, exclamation point, slash, bin slash bash, it's actually just pointing to this link now and it's going into USR slash bin, which is where now we seem to be putting all of the libraries and all of the executables. We can go down here. Look, there's sbin, which is usually where system binaries are kept, and that goes over to USR slash sbin. Uh, so this is a new thing. This is something that Debian was talking about doing in 10 so I'm assuming that that this is why that it's come down in Ubuntu and they did it and so now this is how it's done um, does that mean you need to go back and rewrite all your scripts now so we have to just have shebang slash USR slash bin no as long as this link is in here it'll be perfectly all right but it is what it is and it's something that those of us who actually do dig around in the system we kind of need to be aware of and there's been uh, several other changes as well in in down in the system here in Ubuntu that quite frankly I'm not completely up on I've heard that some stuff has changed so it is what it is <laughs> let's put it that way I'm not gonna keep talking because I'm probably gonna say something that I'm obviously going to get wrong I think that's pretty much all I wanted to show you other than those few little issues that we discussed everything has been very smooth very snappy very quick runs really well I've had basically no issues at all uh, they had a they've done a wonderful job with the theming on this that's what I wanted to show you guys is look at this this is the QT integration here for the uh, 
desktop. This is a Qt application running out here. And let's open up a file manager, which is Kaha. Put them right next to each other. The Kaha file manager is in GTK3, and this is Qt5. And they look pretty damn similar. So they've done a great job, especially when you have the uh, lovely... Um, ambience theme which is the one that I have used for years and years and years and I'm just so used to um, my mom prefers a theme on here called blue Minta and uh, they've done just a great job another thing that I want to mention before we, we wrap this up and I haven't just said I haven't said a word about it is the fact that uh, Ubuntu Mate comes with two applications that are unique to this particular distribution of Linux and Usually, I just uninstall them <laughs> because I don't personally use them. But what they what they do is is it, let's go over here to a empty desktop. Let's get off of there where I have this terminal open, and then we will just open them up. So the first one that I want to show you is let's see here. Uh, I think this will get me to it. No, it's going to open Synaptic because I installed Synaptic Package Manager. That's quite all right. So let's see, let me see the, uh, let me find the software boutique here. This is the software boutique, and what this is, is an application that lists software that is very useful to Linux users. This is not everything that's on the system. This is stuff that you're going to need to get things done, things that are popular. And you can see we have these lists here and uh, we can install these applications some of these applications are not in the ubuntu repositories they have other ways of getting them installed uh, so let's look under internet here uh, we can get a flash player on here should we need it uh, you can install chromium uh, you can install firefox you can install Google Chrome. This is nice for new users who aren't real hip to the process because usually what you have to do with Google Chrome is you would have to open up Firefox and then you would have to download the dev package and install it. I have a shortcut to that. I've actually written a script that installs Google Chrome. It goes and downloads it and installs it. I've shown that in past videos, but people who are brand new to Linux might be going, hey, I'm a Google Chrome user. I need to get a copy of that. This is nice. It's right here. It's available and you just click on it. Uh, so you have all of these wonderful applications that are just a click away from installing. Here's Skype. If you should still use that, there you go. Uh, very nice indeed. There's Thunderbird, which I had to install. And like I said, I can do all this from a terminal, but I am... I've been around a block a few times. It's nice to have an application that makes it real easy for people who... Are, are brand new to Linux to do this sorts of thing. And then the other thing that we need to talk about real quick is the welcome screen, which is you get as soon as you install. So let's go ahead and look at that. Let's see in fact there we go. Now it's now it's the focus is correct. Welcome. And this is really great too for new users because we go here to getting started and we have all of these choices uh, so it, we can uh, optimize the thing these optimization tools we can install drivers here we can um, do updates to the system uh, just a whole bunch that's added in here we also have a shortcut to the software boutique so this will actually become the software boutique and you can start installing software. So a lot of Linux, you have to do something in a terminal to get going. Linux Mint and Ubuntu Mate, you don't. It's all point and click. You can set up the entire system, install all the software you need, and it's all pointy clicky. It's, it's really cool. So there you go, gang. That's kind of my look around. I mean, I could go on, but the video is getting long in the tooth. And uh, I really kind of want you guys to look at it on your own. If you're somebody who likes to play around with these things, definitely give it a shot. And if you find a bug in there, be sure and report it. Uh, kind of like that menu thing. And yes, by the way, it does do that on 
both places I installed it, so I know that's an issue. But that's that's going to get fixed really fast. I know that for sure. And as far as the stuff that I had to add, the, the settings for the sound and the video, that's to be expected. As hardware ages and the kernel moves on, they add new features. Some of those new features don't necessarily get along with the older hardware. It's just something you have to be aware of if you are going to be working with Linux. So thank you for watching. As usual, your feedback is always welcome. Check out easylinux.com for more about Linux, and it's kind of a central place where you can find out more about the YouTube channel here. You can go check out the forum. You can check out uh, the Facebook page, and if you do use Facebook, give it a like. It certainly would be appreciated. And the forum, which is very cool. It is free, secure, and lots of fun. We control that from the server OS on down. This is not a forum that's running on some big corporate platform somewhere that they can change and take away from us. And so you can feel completely assured that whatever you post there is going to be kept private. And the other thing is that we don't allow no shenanigans going on in that forum of people saying or doing nasty stuff. Uh, we have some very good moderators there who, who go through there and, and alert us when things come along. And so, therefore, definitely check that out. Also, uh, Jeremy O'Connell is CleverWise in there. Uh, and I am under Easy Linux. So if you see posts from either one of us, uh, that's how you know who we are in the forum. And Jeremy spends a lot of time in there, a little bit more than I do. Uh, it's kind of his thing. So be sure and give him a shout because all of this... Uh, that this infrastructure on the web he's the engineer and he's the one who set it up and then if you'd like to learn more about what jeremy does just go to easylinux.com scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page there's a link directly to his website and you can find out what he does so that's it thank you for watching i certainly do appreciate it we'll do it again soon